Recording in progress. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to 3D Modeling for Animation in the fall 2021 semester. Today, I will be um, <clears throat> attempting to finish our table and lamp um, exercise. At the moment, I am, well, that is provided I continue to have a good internet connection. Um, so this is pretty much where I left off last Wednesday, and I'm going to keep working with it to make sure that uh, we get something that looks a little bit nicer than what I have at the moment. So um, I sent all of these items over from Modeler, and I am currently in layout. And by default, when you send items over to layout, if we look at the top here, they are in textured shaded solid mode. If I want to see what it's going to look like when it's going to render, I go to VPR mode down here. And this is what it will look like when it actually is um, rendered. And to render the scene, we need to do a couple of things, which we'll do at the very end. We need to look at camera properties. We need to look at the render settings and that sort of thing. So there's a lot of things involved in getting um, this done. We could render it as is and say, call it a day, but I want to dress it up a bit. So I've started by, um, when I was in Modeler, I started by um, giving it some default surfaces, but I want to do something a little bit more interesting with it now. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start with the lampshade, work down to the lamp base, tabletop, table legs, the floor, and then also we're going to maybe put a light inside the, um, the lamp shade or inside the, the lamp itself. Um, we'll use a different kind of light instead of uh, the default um, um, distant light that's used for um, lighting the scene. And when we're done, come up with something that even though it's very simple, may look a little bit more elegant and sophisticated than what we have right now. So to update and to improve the surfaces here, what, what I need to do is I need to bring up the um, surface editor in the upper left-hand corner. Now, by default, all of these surfaces are BSDF um, surfaces, and that's just fine. Um, but I'm going to go back to an old school way of working here. Um, so I'll start, as I said, with the lamp um, shade and work my way back up. So to do that, instead of principled BSDF, I'm going to switch here instead of material, I'm going to switch to standard. And you can see that it took the color away from it. It changed all the settings, but um, that's OK. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this step by step, one option at a time, and I'm going to change um, its properties to make it look more like a lampshade with a light in it. So let's start with the color. So I'll click here and um, we'll just click right there. There we go. So bring up the color picker. So I want kind of a light yellow um, lamp shade color. But lamp shades by default usually are a little transparent, but more importantly, they are translucent. Um, there's a difference. Transparent means that they can you can see through them. Translucent means that light can penetrate or go through it, just like the, the shades on, the, on your um, windows at night. Okay. Then we have some other things here that we need to deal with. There's something called luminosity. Um, so I will do luminosity last, but what that does is it will look like it has an internal light source. There is no light, but it will look like there is one. But let's work with um, specular highlights. Typically, um, we could have 5%, the, the default settings and the glossiness here. We could leave those alone for the time being. Um, maybe I could dull it a little bit, take it down to maybe 20% and just see how that works. Um, these you can play with. Um, with lampshades, there probably would be no reflectivity. And if we wanted to, we could add um, a reflection map to that, but I don't want to do that. 
Transparency, I am going to add maybe 10% transparency to this so we can see through it just a little bit, not a lot. It's not like um, glass or a, you know transparent acrylic or anything. But um, the refraction index that's associated with that would be, is, for example, if you were looking through water, water and glass, tra usually transparent materials bend light. That's what the refraction index refers to. And all of these things can be changed here, or we could have done that with BSDF, but we would have to go into the node editor to do that, which we will do later this semester. There is something called translucency that I just mentioned. I'm going to crank that way up. I'm going to make that like 90%. Now, you're not going to see anything at the moment, but as soon as I put a light source in there, it will allow um, light to come through it. Okay. Um, we also, we could use a color filter to allow color um, images to show through. We don't need to do that. We don't need to adjust diffuse sharpness at the moment. Okay. So I'm pretty much set to go. I could add a bump map. I could do a variety of things to this that, um, again, could dress it up even further. So I've got my lamp shade done. Let's work on the lamp base for a minute. So this I probably do want to have, we could add a little bit of roughness to this. If it was, for example, if it were made out of um, uh, ceramic that was um, had a rough kind of surface. So maybe we could add 20% um, roughness to this. And it won't be as smooth or as shiny as we would normally. Um, I'm going to leave the specular highlights. It um, again, this is principled BSDF. I'm going to switch to um, uh, standard again. So that's going to take all the color out of there. So I'm starting over again. I'll click here for the color here, and I am going to go back to the kind of the purple that I had from before. So there we go. Um, luminosity, none. Um, diffuse, leave it at 95%. Specular highlights, I think I'm going to crank that up to maybe 20%. Um, I'll leave the glossiness at 50 so that it, you know, if, it's, if it has specular highlights, that means that it's kind of a glossy, shiny surface. And much the, you know, the way that a lot of ceramic surfaces have that have been, uh, uh, you know, we that that they're just that you know many ceramic surfaces do have a lot of shiny surfaces. Not all, but that's how I'm going to make my lamp base. It will have. Um, um, I could add a little bit of reflectivity to this, maybe five ten percent, since it is shiny that it will reflect, and um, you know, much like a mirror reflects, but not quite the same. No transparency this time, no translucency, no color highlights or anything, but let's go ahead and let's add a bump map to this. Um, so I'm going to zoom in on this so you can see this a little bit closer. Now, you don't have to do it this way, but what I'm going to do is um, if I want a nice tight shot, this is how I want my final camera setting to be. And I am looking at this through my current camera is that I could move this ahead, for example, at frame maybe 20 or 30. And I'm going to set a brand new um, keyframe here. And <clears throat> so to do that, to see how this looks, maybe I shouldn't do that right now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you that in a minute. So, um, but we could look at this from a variety of different angles. We could also look at this um, instead of, um, uh, current camera, we could also look at this from perspective view. And you can see that it looks very similar at the moment, but, but not quite the same. And I could zoom in. Now, remember from what I was saying last week that the perspective view is different than the camera view. The camera view is the one that the final rendering will, um, uh, will look like. So I can see that I have this smooth, shiny base here. Well, what I want to do is I want to add what is called a bump map to this. So I'm going to come down here and where it says T for bump. Okay, I'm going to click that. 
So let's go ahead and add something that is called um, a procedural, procedural map. So we could add an image to it and project that onto it. But what I want to do is and make it bumpy looking. But instead, what I'm going to do, instead of an image map, where it says right up here, image map, you can see that for all of these are just tons of settings that we have to choose from. I'm going to use procedural texture. And right now, this has um, is set by default to turbulence. Well, I'm going to use maybe something like crumple. Crumple is a good one. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use automatic sizing. And we're going to crank it up a bit. So maybe the sizing is a little bit too much, but you can see that it's starting to look a little bit jaggedy and crumpledy like, the, you, like it would look if you took a piece of paper and crumpled it up and then opened it back up. So that's how it looks now. That's not too bad. That looks pretty nice. So I'm, I'm kind of satisfied with that. I'm going to leave it be. And I'll go ahead and I'll close that. Now let's look at the tabletop. Now I could go back and I could use the BSDF, but in this particular case, why don't we try to use some of the default um, settings here? So we have what are called presets. And so I want my tabletop to look like glass. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead up here, show the list, and I have a list of glass settings, a whole bunch of them. I'm just gonna start with clear, clear glass, okay? We could use simple glass. If you want it to look like jade or a different color, we could do that. Or a wine bottle, okay? We have dimpled glass. We have um, flint glass, a whole bunch of different ones. Diamond, um, I'll just use uh, simple glass for right now. So if you want to apply, anytime you want to apply one of these preset surfaces, make sure that the surface that you want to change is selected here, it's highlighted. And then what you do is you double click and it asks you, do you want to load the settings for that? And you select yes. It will not change the name of your surface, but will apply the settings. So now what we have, you can see that we can actually see through it and you can see how it's distorting. The glass is distorting um, the table legs that are underneath. Now it's kind of nice. It gives it, it adds some realism to it. Okay. Now by default, it has um, black is the color. Maybe I want to use instead of black, um, maybe kind of a bluish color. Let's do, try that and see if it looks any different. It may not look hardly any different at all. And that's okay for right now. So I have my tabletop created now, and now I'm going to do my legs. So let's select the table legs. And again, I'm going to use a preset for that as well. So I'm going to click here, and I want my table legs to be out of metal. And I think I'm going to use um, Chrome. I want them to look like Chrome. So I'll scroll down here until I find Chrome, and I'll double click. I'll add the settings to it. And we can see that it's reflecting the surroundings. Now, it doesn't look like much because um, it's, it's reflecting this generic kind of brown floor that I have here. Well, let's find something else for the floor so that we it looks a little bit more interesting. The reflections in the chrome legs look a little bit more interesting. So let's see some, some of the other um, options that we have here. So we have, let's see, let's, let's see what some of the wood surfaces or maybe some of the stone surfaces look like. Um, maybe we want it to look like polished granite. Let's try that and see how it looks. I don't know if it will look good or not. Looks okay, but um, I'm not that crazy about it. So let's try something else. Um, plastic, procedural, rubber, skin. Let's look at the wood surfaces. 
Now, if I don't like these, then I probably won't because generally the procedurals that you use for wood don't look all that great. I don't like that at all. So instead, I'm gonna try something here. Um, I'm gonna try and apply an image to this instead. So we can use basic colors. We can use the procedurals that we've used so far. We can also um, apply images to these. So let's try that instead. So instead of the BSDF again, I'm gonna to switch to standard and it goes to a default gray surface. And now what I need to do is I'm going to um, apply uh, a wood surface to this, one that's of an image. So to do that, where it says color, and again, you'll it'll take time for you to get acclimated to all of this, is I hit T for texture. And this is where I can apply a planar surface. Now that's the, the default projection is planar. It is a flat plane, that's what I want. If this were a cylinder, I would probably apply the cylindrical surface. If it were a sphere, I would apply it as a sphere, a cubic surface, a front projection, and we have what are also called UV maps. So again, there's a lot of different ways of doing this. I'm gonna use planar, because that's exactly what it is, just a flat plane. So now I need to load my image. And now you need to find images and you can get them off the internet, there's a variety of different places that you can go or you could scan your own image. It's up to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to find in my, um, let's see, it will be in my applications is where mine will be. But where you can get yours could be anywhere. So I'm going to go into old, these old new tech settings. Light wave, let's see. I want to go back to here's these old light wave ones. So I'm going to go back to 11.5. Is it in there? No. Is it in here? No. Is it in here? It could be in here. There we go. In my folder, it's in this old 9.6 because they used to include a lot of uh, new tech used to include a lot of um, classic content. So what I want are these classic images here. And if I scroll down and I look at the wood settings here, I don't want any reflections. I know that this gets really, really complicated. Here's some wood. Let me scroll down here. Let's try some, this light oak small. So I'm gonna go ahead and select okay. And it's loading it. And notice that it doesn't look so hot. It looks similar to the procedural texture that we had. So there's a couple of things that we need to do. We want it to repeat. Um, maybe we don't though, so I'll select reset. And I'll select reset so that it just stretches this the, to the, the surface to the entire surface. But that's probably not what we want. You need to look now and you need to see how about what axis is it projecting it. And by, by default, it projects it from the front along the z-axis. Well, if we look, the floor is perpendicular to the y-axis, and that is the one that it is using. If you're not sure, try the X and see how that looks. That doesn't look right either. If I look at the Y, that's looking a little bit better. It's still too large, but what I want it to, to do is I do want it to repeat. Okay, so I'm gonna select repeat for both of these along the width and the height. And I probably want it a little bit smaller because the default projection for these is one meter. So let's try automatic sizing and see what I get here. And that doesn't really look much better. Maybe what I could do along here is it's, um, I'm gonna put 50 millimeters just to see what it looks like. Not 500, 50 millimeters. 
And that's kind of small, but let's put the other one down here along the Z and let's make that 50 millimeters too. Um, I'm guessing here to see how it's going to look. It's starting to look pretty decent though. Um, that's actually pretty, pretty decent. Um, it's probably a little bit too large, but it could work for us. It could work for us just fine. You know what, for the time being, I'm going to leave it at that. Let's leave it at, um, how about the Z? Let's see, I'm going to make the Z 100 millimeters and see how that works for us. And I'm going to make the, um, the X a little bit narrower. So I think I'm going to make it maybe 35 millimeters. So it's not, it doesn't have quite the same width as before. And that's looking a bit more like a wood floor to us. You can begin to see the grain of the wood. And probably what would, is really still needed is a bump map to give it some depth where the cracks are and that sort of thing. But for right now, I'm OK with it. Um, I'm OK. I'm going to leave it as is. Um, I think that's good enough for us for our first project. So what I need to do now to dress this up a little bit further, because you can see the edge of our floor. Um, we don't have a light inside our table or inside our lamp. So I'm going to go back from perspective view back to my camera view. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to put a light inside the lamp. Okay. So let's do that. So if I want to add a light, then what I do is I work over to the left. If I have items, we can see that we can add. We can add null objects, lights. We can add additional cameras, a dynamic object. We can clone objects from here. We can mirror objects. And we can create arrays. I want to add a light. What kind of light do I want? That's the next question that you have to ask yourself. Well, there's a whole bunch of different kinds of lights. We can add and adjust the ambient light. We can add sunlight. Okay. We can add an area light. It's interesting that they've added sunlight because area lights, yeah, um, distant, this used to be called uh, distant light, the sunlight. We can add area lights, which is the big panel of light. Um, distant lights, as I said, we already have one here. Um, we have environment lights. We already have one. We don't need another. We can add linear lights, which are uh, equi equivalent to um, fluorescent lights. Um, we can add, and, and use n-gons, which are like polygons that have been turned into lights. We can add a photometric light. Um, we can add a point light. We can add a primitive light. We can add a spherical light. We can add a spotlight. Well, I want to use a point light. Point lights are just a little ball of light. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do that. I'm going to add a point light. So that's similar to what we would see. And I'll name it light bulb. So I know the difference between it and the default light that was given to us. And it doesn't change here because it automatically puts it in the center of our universe. So what I need to do is I need to switch from um, the VPR mode to, so that I can see through this. And let's look at wireframe. And you can see here is that light right down here. Now, when we add objects in our, um, in our scene, notice that we can move them. And we can go to Modify, make sure that Move is selected. And it usually is by default. We can have it slide up and down the Y axis. And I want it inside our lamp here. All right, now let's go back. Let's go back to, um, to instead of wireframe, let's go to VPR and let's see what it looks like. And you can see how it's dramatically affecting our scene inside here. Now, right now, maybe it's a little bit too bright. Um, I don't know, but it's, something that we need to maybe play with. So to play with it, 
you need to make sure that light in lights, the light is we have chosen is selected, the light bulb. And then I select the properties. And now properties pops up. And in properties, we can change the color of the light. We can also um, determine its um, the intensity of the light. Um, they've changed this over time. Um, I think it was in 2018 that they did this, and they now measure it in lux, which is used by photographers. So let's um, change this from a bright white to maybe kind of a light yellow kind of color here. Okay, And it just changes it ever so subtly. Um, instead of 3.14 lux, let's go all the way down to maybe one lux and see what we get. Now, maybe that's a little bit not bright enough because I would like to see a little bit more um, of the, the light reflected on the floor. So let's change it to two, two lux. And I think I like that a little bit better. Now, another thing that we can do with this to dress it up even more is that we can um, add volumetrics to this. So what I can do is we can, um, let's go in here and let's add, it says, let's go ahead and affect volumetrics. So I have volumetrics here and that needs to be changed in another setting here. So what I need to do in order to actually see some of that, the light shining through here, um, before I change it here, though, I'm going to change the, the properties of the, of the light that we have um, that was given to us by default. And by default, as I said, it's a distant light. So if I switch from light bulb down here to light, and I go to the properties panel, you can see by default it's a distant light. Well, I'm also going to switch. So I can see what the light looks like or where it's located is I'm going to switch from VPR back to wireframe. And I'm going to um, also switch from current camera to um, perspective view, just so I can zoom out and see this a little bit better. If I zoom out a little bit, you can see here's the light that's selected at the moment. And that's a distant light. And you can see it looks like kind of a, a can, uh, a light. Uh, uh, what can I say? There's a, a type of a can that's associated with uh, certain kinds of uh, basic lights. And it sort of looks like that. Now watch how it changes when I switch from a distant light to a um, spotlight. So this is what it looks like when it's a spotlight. Now, if I'm not sure what it's pointing at, I mean, this could be pointing away from it. Instead of looking at it from perspective view, I could look at it from light view. Now, I want to look at it from the current light. And that's exactly what I'm looking at. So now I can rotate it. I can move it forwards or backwards. Let's go ahead and move it up a little bit. So if I want to move it up, I have move selected by default. And remember, we hit the, the right mouse button, and I can move it up like so. And if I want to move it forward, I can by moving the mouse forward. If I want to rotate it, I hit the Y. And now I can point it down a little bit like so. Now let's see how that looks. So I'm going to switch from current light back to camera view. And let's go from camera view, I have in wireframe, let's go back to VPR. And you can see that that dramatically changed everything. So now maybe I do need to go back to my lampshade and I need to crank it up a little bit so it's a little bit brighter. Or I need to select, here we have the light that's selected and I need to go to its properties. Let's select light properties, here we go. And again, that set to 3.14 lux, well, let's go ahead and crank that up to maybe five lux and see what we get. And it's a little bit brighter, okay? Not a whole lot, but a little bit. Maybe it needs to be closer to our object. 
Now, another thing that will dramatically, dramatically affect this is that you'll notice that there is a fall off to this. It's the inverse direction or distance rather to the light. Now, if I turn that off and I say off, watch how much brighter it is. Way, way, way too bright now. So I'm gonna go back to 3.14 and see how that looks. And that looks much better. Now, if I change the, the angle of this, what I wanna do is I wanna get rid of um, the edge of the floor. Notice how the cone of the light is covering up the, the edge here. So I wanna get rid of it here as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go back into the properties of, of it and I can change, um, because it is a cone of light, it's a spotlight, I can come back in here and I can change the, the cone angle of it. Remember, it's a cone. So it can be a wide, broad cone, or it can be a very narrow, specific kind of spotlight. Let's go ahead and let's change this from 30, make it a little bit smaller. I want to try and hide the edge. There we go. I'm hiding the edge of the floor. So this is sort of like what you would do in um, set design, where um, creating only the elements that we need and to build our scene and anything outside of that that isn't important, then um, we leave it alone. So if I want, I could come back here and I can make the floor larger. Um, maybe that's not a bad idea because I think I should go back here and increase this just a little bit. Okay, give us a little bit. Yeah, I'm gonna go back to the 30, the default. Okay, so I'm gonna select the floor. So now I need to go back to objects. So you can see that I'm sort of bouncing around here. And as I see things that need to be edited, I'll go back and I'll change them. So now I have the object selected and I wanna make sure that I, I don't want the lamp selected, I want the floor selected. And I'll go back under modify and I'll go ahead and I'll stretch it. So we'll go ahead and I'll stretch. But remember it's gonna affect, let's go ahead and I'm gonna change the, um, from VPR, I'm going to switch to wireframe so I can see the edge of that. And I want this to be stretched out like so. Okay, now let's go back to, instead of wireframe, let's go to, there we go. So now that's a way of kind of hiding the edge of that. So it's coming along pretty nicely. But I want to add, again, I want to dress it up just a little bit more. And you can see now how the chrome legs are reflecting the floor. And because we have absolutely nothing surrounding this, we have a, a void, we have, there's a lot of black in here. So that's exactly what it's reflecting, a void. And we could put in an artificial environment if we wanted to, that would work as well. But what I wanna do is I wanna add some volumetric lighting so we could actually see, you know, much the same way that when you're in a theater, or you're watching a, a, a performance and you see the spotlight on the performer and you see that cone of light um, appear. Well, that's sort of what I wanna do here. I wanna make sure that I see a cone of light come from here and maybe from there. So what I need to do is I'm gonna go to um, my render properties. So if I go to render, which I need to adjust anyway, let's go to render properties here. And let's go to volumetrics. So I want to enable volumetrics. Make sure that that works. Um, let's go ahead and use volumetric scattering. And boom, when, as soon as I did that, look what happened to the, to the light here. Now that needs to be turned way down. So this is you know just way, way, way too much. So we right now we have, um, by adding the volumetric scattering here, I have the color. Um, scattering weight is 
maybe if we were to change it to 20%, let's see what that looks like. Yeah, so it's a little bit, it's a little bit more subtle or even more subtle than that, maybe 10%. So you can begin to see, you know, much the way that you would in, uh, if you were to photograph it in real life, you'd begin to see some of that, um, the volume of the light appear. So that's what I'm doing with that. Let's see if we can't go to, um, under lights, let's go to our um, spotlight and let's try, yeah, I want the light here and I want to see if I can't. It says use volumetric scattering. So that's for render properties. So let's look at our light properties here. And I don't know if I turned on um, that here. I, it says affect volumetrics. So maybe I need to crank that up a bit. So let's see if what I can do here. Let's um, go back. And I might have to, I'm gonna turn off render properties for a second here. Let's, um, let's go to a global illumination and change and look at a few things. Enable secondary light source. So I'm going to have to come back and refine this. Let's go to render. I'm going to leave the default render settings for right now under general and leave those alone too, but I'll have to come back to that. So let's see, you can see that the planks in my floor are awfully big, but I'm just going to leave them alone for right now. Um, and see that they're a little bit too big. I, what I need to do is I'm, I need to check the light properties for our light and it is a spotlight. Let's go ahead and if I turn inverse intensity on, that might bring it back. So let me go back to um, and turn it up. I'm gonna turn it up to like 12 and see if that affects it. And it doesn't. So I'm gonna go back and turn that off. And that's just way too bright. So I'll go back to 3.14. And I'm gonna to switch to um, perspective view. I'll leave it in VPR. Whoops, I wanna leave it in VPR. But I'm going to switch to set a camera view. I'm going to go back to perspective view. And I want to see um, and see a little bit of the volumetrics of that light, but I don't see it, the, the properties for it for um, our spotlight. So let's go ahead and change it. Um, So maybe I do need to go back to, I'll have to come back to that. I might have to, um, let's see. No, yeah, effect volumetrics. I have volumetrics lighting here. So projection image spot, volumetric intensity, set to 100%, fall off is off spot. So let's go back again and bring up, um, let's go to render, I haven't even rendered this thing yet. Let's go back to our render properties and bring that back. And again, let's look at volume metrics. And global elimination, number of rays, ray force. 
Ah, oh, I'm forgetting to put, to turn something on. Well, just, let's just leave it as is for the time being. I mean, it's good, not what I'd hoped, but it's um, it's good. So I'm going to switch back to the camera. Okie doke. So I'm pretty darn close to getting my final solution here. Now what I want to do is I need to do a final rendering of this. And this is what you're going to turn into me. Okay, so what you need to do is we need to now select camera at the bottom. And we need to go into camera properties. In camera properties, I want to set it to, let's set it to 1280 by 720. Multiplier is set to 100%. Um, we have minimum and maximum samples. I'm going to change this from 1 and 8 to 8 and 16. And what this does is it will, when it does the final rendering of this, is that it will smooth out the jaggies. It adds anti-aliasing to this. We could add, if we had animation, we could add motion blur to this. We could do all sorts of things, but this is fine for right now under the camera settings. Well, let's see what I get just as a test render. And I'm gonna turn off the render properties. Enable lens flares and uh, have all sorts of things that I have in here that I may not need at the moment, but um, I'm good for right now. And again, I don't know why. Yeah, I'm enabling volumetrics, volumetric integer. Okay, we can change the number of settings and we have the scattering weight. Let's go ahead here. I'm gonna change the scattering weight back to 100%. And where I'm going to change it is I'm going to change it in the, the light properties itself. So if I go back to from camera to um, lights, and I want to look at the light properties for our um, light bulb. So let's look at the light properties for the light bulb. And you can see I have the volumetric intensity set here to 100%, and I'm going to turn that down to maybe 10%. There we go. So I was hoping it would affect our um, the light that we have uh, the um, that's shining on everything. It's our you know that I changed to uh, um, a spotlight, and it's not. Maybe I'll change that just a little bit more instead of, um, I'll go ahead and I'll make that 20%. That's a bit exaggerated, but you get the idea. Okay, I'll close the render properties and now I'm ready to, ready, ready to do my final render. So now what we need to do is under render, the render tab is I need to, here, render frame. So if I click render frame, it pops up and it begins to do its thing to render it. And when we are done, probably should have extended the back of that a little bit. It might take a couple of minutes for this to render. Shouldn't take too long. Then what we have to do <clears throat> is we have to save it as a JPEG and or Photoshop file. And once it's saved, <clears throat> then that's what you will upload to our shared Google Drive. As, that's, as this is rendering, do you have any questions for me? I know I bounced around a lot, but that's typically what you do in the final settings here. You look at what needs to be done and I change the light. Um, if I see that the camera needs adjustment, I'll change that. What I probably need to do is go back and change the size of the floor, the wood in the floor. It's much too big. 
needs to be much smaller. So I'd want to change that. I want to add the volume metrics to the um, uh, to the spotlight and go back in and check my settings to see why that's not working. I need to expand the distance of the floor a little bit. So you're constantly tweaking one thing at another and you're bouncing around going here and there. But I have all the basic properties set up. I have my camera angle. I'm happy with the, um, the appearance of the objects that I've created. And now it's all that fine tuning to make it look you know, very real. Now, I know when I was doing my gallery in the final stages of that, I was tweaking some lights <clears throat> and changing, uh, you know, really minuscule things. And because I had so many objects and so many lights and everything, it could take 12 to 15 hours to render one of my scenes. It's not going to take that long for yours um, to render yours, but <clears throat> that's basically what you know, what you need to do. And that's something that you'll need to do for your final project, okay? You know, save enough time to render it, render it again, 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 and do some final tweaks so that you really get an idea of what it's gonna look like. Um, and you can get, now that it's, you know, finished, I can click abort and it's all done. And I can see that I have this little image here at 100%. And now I can save it. So under File, you can see that I have all of these options here. Well, I'm going to save it as a, as a lightweight JPEG right now. And this is where I will save it will be inside in my desktop where I saved that, created that content folder. I want to save it in images. So I'll name it Table and Lamp. And I'll save it there. So this is what you will upload to Google Drive. I'm pretty much done today, but I'm going to go back in and I'm going to you know start to tweak some of the settings here. I'm going to um, go out of uh, VPR mode, go back to wireframe, and I'm going to select under objects. I'm going to select the floor. Oops, I don't want the floor here. Let's go back, not the table, I want the floor. There we go. And I'll stretch this back a little bit. There we go. So just change the width of that a little bit. Let's go back to the surface editor. Um, so I'm done tweaking that. Um, let's go back to the surface editor. So um, uh, instead of wireframe, Let's go back to camera, wireframe. Let's go back to VPR. Now it's looking a little bit better, but now let's change the size of the wood in the floor. So I need to bring my surface editor back up. I need to make sure that the floor is selected. Okay. Come on. There we go, okay. Now let's go into where we have the texture, T for texture. And I can make this really reflective if I wanted, but right now the size is way too big. So um, let's see, I want this to re repeat. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go back to the automatic sizing and see how that looks. See how big it is? Um, I want this to be, let's just say X is 10 millimeters. And let's say the Z is 20 millimeters. How do I know that? I don't. I'm just guessing. And that looks more appropriate. That's a, you know, appropriate. Um, size for that. Um, so that'll work. The Y distance is unimportant. That could be zero because I don't really don't have a height to that. And it looks okay. There are better woods that I could have chosen. And again, if you're not happy with that, 
and the remaining minutes that I have, let's try another one. So instead of this light oak, let's go ahead and let's load image. And hopefully it will take me back to the ones that I had and it's not. So let's go back to my, um, uh, 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 let's see. I'm gonna go back to applications. Where are you? I don't want here. I need to go back to, there we go, applications. Let's go back to where I had that um, new tech, Lightwave 9.6. And there's that classic content that I have. And I believe I made classic content for all of you that should be on Google Drive. So let's try a different um, wood type. So I use um, light wood, teak. How about wood tile? Let's try that instead. I see that's way, way, way too small. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna use automatic sizing. See how that works. And you can see that the tiles are way, way, way too big now. So, um, cause it only, it uses one tile and that's it. So again, I'm gonna go back to maybe 50 millimeters by 50 millimeters just to see how it looks. And that looks much, much better. I like the look of that a lot. Um, it's also possible that my um, volumetric lighting is a little bit too strong. I could dial that back um, a little bit. And all the while, you know, I've been making all of these changes and I have not saved my scene. Now, when you're saving your scene, this is the last and final thing that I'll cover today. Um, what you need to do is make sure that you save the scene. So I've already have it saved. Um, so if I hit Command S, okay, it will save and it will overwrite the old one. But notice that I've made changes to my objects. So if I'm not careful, those changes will not be saved. So I need to go to Save, and I need to save all objects too. Save all objects. So because I changed the surfaces of each of them, that will change as well. And those changes will be updated. So do either of you have any questions before we call it a day? Work on trying to complete this. And as I said, I will probably tweak this a little bit more, show it to you on Wednesday. But we will start um, building our, um, our character, Mike, in um, uh, Lightwave. And Light Mike is from the series reboot that existed a long time ago. Um, if I want to make changes to any of my objects, I'd have to go back to Modeler and make those cha the changes there. Um, but it works best for the final surfacing to do that in layout and where I also at the same time, I edit my lights, I edit the camera properties and that sort of thing. So um, probably the only thing we're done today is I'm going to uh, look into why my um, volumetrics isn't working for my, um, my spotlight. And I'll go back in and I'll check on that and get back to you on Wednesday. Okay. So if there aren't any questions, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm gonna say goodbye. I'm gonna pause my recording and I will see all of you on Wednesday. I will have this um, up on YouTube. Now, because the last one got, the last lecture got goofed up because of my um, uh, <clears throat> internet connection, I put two old um, or old from last year, old recordings onto our, our current Google Drive or our current YouTube folder. 
So you can always look at those as well if you need to. Okay, no questions. No, clear as mud. I can always review this, go over this again. Look at the older recordings that I've done. Um, but this is what you guys need to be working on and finish up. Okay. Okie doke. Bye bye.